This video is sponsored by Noom. Miss Lane? Hey, how you doing? You know, we really do live in a society. We live in the age of grounded, cynical cape shit, where sincerity is too often tossed aside, where everything has to be filled with meta jokes that let us know how goofy this all is, or everything has to be so dark, biblical, and violent that we must take it all so seriously. It's all a postmodern construction that pokes fun at the foundations or a deconstruction that challenges the notion of heroism. We live in the goddamn age of countless CW caped cable shows. shows which started so sincere, so cool, so unique, filled with such heart, so much so that they kickstarted the entire superhero television boom. Going stale like a breakfast cereal you used to adore as a child, but can't stand the sight, can't bear the smell, can't fathom the thought of now. What was beautiful is now a meme. What was groundbreaking went out with the fizzle. What was supported with the utmost care is now seemingly executed carelessly. And perhaps most tragically, we live in an age where WB is so scared of Superman, so scared of pretty much any character other than Batman, that we haven't gotten a solo Superman adaptation in almost a decade. The greatest, kindest, most giving, and most loving hero of all seemingly doesn't have a place in our modern world world. How far have we really come if we seemingly can no longer believe a Superman can fly? Now I know, I know, the show isn't finished. This video in a few weeks time could be as dated as the notion of the depth. The series could go straight from the beautiful frozen fortress right into stanky hot hell. But listen, it's been a rough month filled with drastic life changes, the death of my soul and the birth of a new outlook. But the one consistent, the one constant has always been and will always be my love of fictional individuals, inspiring icons, beautifully selfless monuments who just want to do the right thing. And boy oh boy, Jarrell be damned, the planet Krypton be exploding, do I just really want to talk about but first, I'd like to take a super quick moment to give a big old thanks to the sponsor of this video, Noom. Noom is a new way to get healthy, lose weight, and achieve your goals using proven psychology and cognitive behavioral therapy practices. Noom helps you learn how that strange, strange mind of yours works and understand the why behind your decision making. With a focus on learning instead of dieting, you'll learn what leads to real, lasting change. Trust me when I say that things can get horrendously tricky, which is why I love that Noom has personal goal specialists trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition to help keep you motivated along the way. And with group chat support, you can chat with like-minded peers for that extra boost to help you reach your goals. There's even a food, water intake, and exercise tracker to help you keep track of your diet and physical progress. Sadly, I must say that over the last year, I added a couple pounds and lost a couple more grams of self-respect. Using Noom, I'm not magically cured, but I am feeling more comfortable in my own skin. Clothes fit better, I'm less stressed, I got more energy, and frankly, I no longer feel like my body runs off motor oil and deep-rooted self-hatred. The point is, now is the perfect time to take your free 30-second quiz using the link found in the description or the pinned comment of this video. It only takes 30 damn seconds to take the damn quiz, and it helps create a custom plan tailored to you, so I highly recommend trying it out to live a healthier lifestyle with Noom today. Thanks, guys. Frankly, forthcomingly, I must be honest. I must tell the truth that you all already know to be true. I was never a man who was a fan of Zack Snyder's Superman. There was a time in my life when I was a younger, angrier lad, a time when I really just despised about everything that was being done with Superman on the big screen, and a time when I couldn't separate when I didn't have the empathy to separate faithful rendition from one's polarizing artistic vision. And at that time, I was so desperately longing for anything that felt close to my idea of what Superman could and should be. Monday, October 10th, 2016. I can taste it like it was yesterday. I sat my ass down knowing Superman was going to show up on Supergirl. I sat my my ass down anticipating anything that wasn't a twisted neck or an emotionally distant depressed wreck. I sat my fat ass down and saw Tyler Hecklin and Supergirl's take on the man of tomorrow burst onto the scene with a lickety split and a glorious shirt rip. I saw him come in and shake hands with everyone, be a complete dork, a naive optimist, a smiling friend. I saw him come in and just feel like the Superman I had looked up to my entire life. It was quite the experience and I still feel the phantom pain of the massive 
grin I had on my acne riddled face. But could that last? I mean, really. As time went on, the novelty of a soups that wasn't Snyder's faded, the shows became less and less engaging, and his appearances never held the weight of that first bright shining moment. Did I only adore this take because I dreaded the other? Maybe the cameos, the supporting roles was all it ever, all Superman ever really could be. Let me ask you something. Were you excited for Superman and Lois? I mean, before the trailer, was there hype? Was there belief in a CW Superman show? I think not. I think most people probably shrugged like me. I think most people had the same trepidation, the same question the creators must have. Is there even a story to tell? And the answer to that daunting and haunting question was surprisingly pretty simple. They could have started fresh, retold the origin, spent five overly long seasons explaining how and why Clark and Lois fell in love. They could have looked to the past, but instead, they looked forward and told the simplest, most genuine, honest story they could. The story of a Superman who has a family. Now, right off the bat, let me just say that this show is fucking revolutionary in its craft, in its filmmaking for the CW. Call me a masochist because I've watched way too many CW shows. Vampire Diaries, Riverdale, you name it. And not since early, early Flash or Arrow. Hell, Smallville has the filmmaking and storytelling felt so tight, felt so filled with care. The blocking has purpose. The lighting is dynamic. There's a style, a sense of vision, and a passion behind the scenes. Does it get me? off visually like Daredevil? <laughs> Does it visually do it for me as much as Daredevil or Gotham? Is the writing free from the curse of 35 year olds writing trendy 15 year olds? Does it have Mickey plus levels of production value? Nah. But is this a huge leap forward? A huge leap that avoids the standard tropes of the CW caped cable programming, avoids the room full of techie men and women slamming their fingers down on keyboards while spouting exposition, avoids the will they won't they couples, and instead as two strong leads that are there for each other support each other and aren't a complete eroding toxic mess of drama? Yes. Superman and Lois is shockingly radical for the CW, but the thing is, it feels comfortably familiar as a Superman tale. The show assumes you've seen, the show openly references and openly loves all the different takes on Superman. It doesn't try to give us a fresh new take, it doesn't try to reinvent the wheel, instead it gives us a very classic tale while updating, while adding, but never straying away from what makes makes what has always made Superman, Superman. The Boy Scout loving charm of Donner and Reeve, the high flying action and societal fear of what a god means in our modern world from the Snyderverse, the compassionate, intelligent, empathetic Lois of the comics and the DC animated universe, the high school drama and cheesy CW sincerity of Smallville, it tosses it all into an HBO co-financed larger budget blender and juices out a perfect modern take on Superman that fans of any or of every big belief should enjoy. But the big thing, the thing I love the most, the thing that makes Superman and Lois feel so special to me is the simple question the series asks again and again. A question Clark gets asked again and again by his enemies, by his father. A simple question too often asked by us. And that question is why? John Henry Irons believes that this Superman cannot stay good. He believes that we cannot put our faith in any man who swears to protect us. He asks why? Why can we be so sure he won't go bad and choose power over humanity? Why can we? Why do we trust Superman? They are his people. He will choose his kind over mankind. What chance we have? Morgan Edge Taro asks, why trust them? Why trust humanity? Why trust us? We are a hateful species fueled by fear. Why does Clark continue to care? Why does he choose to protect? And it is a choice, it always has been. There's no guilt from losing someone he loves, there's no torturous curse, no hopeless mission out of fear. Superman is not defined by some great tragedy, he's not trying to atone for his past sins, he's not trying to redeem himself. His heroism wasn't thrusted upon him, he wasn't told to do anything, he isn't attempting to live up to his heritage, he simply made a choice to be a hero, our greatest hero, the world's friend. He chose to be our hope. He chose to love us. Edge tries to force Smallville to become a new Krypton because of the fear he felt as a lost traveler, the pain he felt never belonging and never experiencing hope. 
He attempts to force Smallville, humanity, to become like him, rule with him, so he is no longer afraid, so he is no longer alone. Irons tries to force the world to see the Superman he saw, force them to fear, force them to feel the anguish he felt when he lost his Lois, his love. And the series constantly forces Clark to keep making a choice again and again. Peace or violence, anger or empathy, fear or love. Make a choice. Us or them. And he always chooses love. There is no us or them. But why? Why do you love them? There must be a reason. And the answer to that is given to us in the very first frame of the show. I remember coming to this earth, feeling the sun on my face for the first time. Oh my god, Jonathan! It's a baby boy! Hold on, Martha. It's given to us in every peaceful moment Clark spends reflecting on his past, on his dad who loved him so unconditionally, on his mother who dedicated her life to helping, to giving her all to her neighbors when she never had all that much to give. It's given to us every time he holds his sons, every time he sees himself both the beauty and the terror of being different in his boys. The answer to that why is given to us in the title of the damn show. Because within all the agony, the tragedy, the harm we inflict on one another, there is always light. There is always Lois. Lois Lane, the best of us, the best we have to offer, the best we can hope to be. Always wanting to do the right thing, always having the empathy and understanding to know what that is. Ever enduring, ever persevering through her doubt, through her trauma, through all the loss she has experienced. She still manages to stand strong and try her damnedest to be there for everyone in ways those around her never were for her. She's Kal-El's beacon, Superman's heart and Clark's soul. She's what Clark sees in everyone, in human beings. Instead of seeing small, selfish, indulgent, fearful, hateful, spiteful specks when he soars high above us, he sees love, will, strength, courage, compassion. He sees Lois. And whether it's sitting on the porch sharing a glass of wine after an absurdly long day, or painting Clark's childhood home together with their sons, whether it's embracing on a bench or kissing in the elevator, whether it's sailing high in the clouds or laying peacefully next to each other, whether it's passion or comfort, uncertainty or stability, there is always, without a doubt, such a tangible, fiery, fierce, palpable, oozing and mature love between these two. And love is hard, man. Loving is hard. Love is trying to have forgiveness for the unforgivable. It's attempting empathy for apathy. It's wishing the best when we've done the worst. It's the most horrifying, all-consuming coldness and the greatest indescribable, unshakable warmth. It's about withstanding it all, riding an ever-cracking, capsizing sailboat into the rocky, unbearably harsh and frigid waters of life and somehow still making the choice to share all of yourself with another. Love is the intrepid reporter and the farm boy seeing, feeling, understanding every part of each other, all the beauty, all the darkness, the secrets never shared before. I kept my secret from everyone for so long, and now I know why. It's for you. It's the Superman's and the Pulitzer Prize winner's constant struggle of protecting and nurturing their lives and their love. Love is choosing to stand by each other's side in hopes of feeling, appreciating that sunlight together. Finally, after sailing for so long, reaching that unreachable shore of blissful peace and wanting to share that together. Now maybe this is sappy, maybe this is all cheesy, maybe this is just downright preachy. But that's what love and that's what Superman is, right? We started believing a man can fly a long time ago, but maybe we've forgotten why he flies. Perhaps the struggle of the character should never have been figuring out what world-ending threat a Superman must face. It should never have been about bending, contorting the character to fit a modern world. It should have been about, it's always been about, making a god, an alien, a distant traveler, an immigrant, a wholesome boy from Kansas who decides to dedicate his life to saving us feel like us. That's the creative struggle behind all comic book heroes. How do we make these icons 
icons inspire? How do we tell these grand mythic stories where the strongest of beings fight away the evil while also making those beings feel like our neighbor, feel like our friend? Here you go, friend. Thanks. Superman never needed updating. He never needed to be reinvented. He never needed to be deconstructed. He never needed to go bad for us to care about him being good. He just needed a space, a farm with a beautiful yellow sun in order to shine. We only ever needed to see that, feel the rays of warmth that come, not from a superpowered Christ-like figure with the weight of the world on his steel shoulders who can be cut by kryptonite, but from a small town kid from Kansas whose greatest weakness is that he cares so much. We never needed to believe a man could fly to believe in Superman. We just needed to believe in Clark Kent. And there is no Clark Kent without Lois Lane. There is no Superman without his love. Why? Why is simple. Because he does. He does love. Clark Kent makes the insanely illogical, painful, but hopelessly beautiful choice to put on that goofy outfit, fly high in the sky, look around, and love all of us for all that we are and all that we hopefully someday can be.